Our guest today is a revival historian, but she's also the great granddaughter of one of the most famous miracle revival tent preachers, A.A. A. Allen. So she's going to share some insights about revival and a few stories we have not heard before about one of our favorite preachers. I spent a, a good portion of my childhood hearing stories about how great God is and what He's capable of. And it really stirred something in my heart as a child. I remember going when um, I was about nine years old on a family vacation and out came all of these miracle magazines like, you know, these ones here, just so many different magazines showing just a monthly dialogue of all that God is capable of that was going on in the ministry of my great grandfather. My great grandpa was A. a. Allen and he was known for quite a few things during the healing revival of the 1950s and 60s. And this was his tent that went up in 1960. It was the world's largest tent. And this tent was actually larger than an American football field. It was absolutely massive and would seat 20,000 people. So they would fill it three times a day, most of the year, day after day in various campaigns. And the the scale and scope of what happened was quite incredible. Oh, well, I believe that God wants to come to people under this tent tonight. Jesus made his desire to come to you. Last night, he came to a man here on a stretcher, given up to die there since his daughter tonight, said he's feeding himself today. He's having a great time. Oh, friend, listen to me. God came to people here last night. God came to multitudes of people last night. He comes to people morning, afternoon, and night under this tent. And people on these stretchers and these wheelchairs that can't walk, God is going to come to them tonight. I think that my great-grandfather was searching to learn how to go about the call of God on his life. When he was just at that moment of having a radical encounter with God where he was saved as a young man at 23 years old. He had a vision at that time and saw m masses of crowds of people that he was preaching to and hundreds and thousands of people were coming to the altar to get saved and in these meetings. And this was a vision that God had given him at the time that he became a Christian. and he began to go on this journey of trying to discover how do I actually make that happen? And so he really pursued going after learning whatever was gonna get him in front of the calling on his life. And he knew that he was supposed to be saving souls. That was his mission, was bring people into the kingdom of God just like he had come in. Today is the day of salvation. Now, now, right now, is the accepted time. Bow your heads, everybody. Bow your heads. I'm going to tell you this. While your heads are bowed, you got 15 seconds. What you do in the next 15 seconds can determine where you spend eternity. Get your hand ready. Don't raise until I say three. But when I say three, if you want to be remembered in this prayer and are willing to pray yourself and follow my instructions, you'd better get your hand up to heaven and let God see it. Here we go. Here's the first one. One. Here's the second one. Watch out. Two. Get your hand ready. Every sinner, every backslider, every one of you that are not sure. Get your hand up now. Get your hand ready. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it is. Pray. Watch out. Watch out. It's now or never. It's heaven or hell. Here it is. Three. Raise your hand, ever sinner. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you right where you stand. Everyone with your hand raised, stand to your feet right where you are. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you now. Bow your heads. You devil, in the name of Jesus, take the chains and the shackles off of his people. 
Let them go free. I claim them for heaven. And Christ tonight, in Jesus' name, it's done. Wait a minute. Don't sit down. Don't sit down, lady. If you do, you may be lost forever. You've got one more thing to do. Every one of you that are standing, do one more thing. Go to the aisle nearest you. Come running down this aisle as fast as you can run. We're coming to Jesus. Come running and stand in front of me for 30 seconds. Come down these aisles. You know, he was really one that uh, got into that place with God because he knew that if he was going to have a ministry that impacted lives, he was going to need God in his corner and uh, with him on that journey. It's incredible to see the scale of ministry. There was over 15,000 ministers that were in his network all over the world. And um, he had a property called Miracle Valley and there was 2,400 acres that was a, a training center, the Miracle Revival Training Center included a, a Bible school, which was one of the first integrated, fully racially integrated uh, Bible schools in America. The scale of the Miracle magazines that were coming out on a monthly basis, these were actually going out like about 30 pages per month just detailing what had happened in that month or the previous month and uh, sharing, you know, healings that were taking place because it really marked his ministry. There was a lot of incredible miracles that transpired. And in fact, there's a, a few magazines here that come to mind that really showcase some of the miracles. So here's a, a tiny club feet that uh, little toes grew on for this baby. And that is what I would classify as a creative miracle. And then we've got uh, things where here's a new kneecap for someone. And it, all of these were medically verified. He um, and my great grandma really felt it was incredibly important to be able to verify things. So they would never put anything in here. A lot of the mag uh, most magnificent um, miracles never actually made it into publicity because they just wanted to verify everything and see what God was up to. So we just see some incredible miracles. This woman lost over 200 pounds right in the meeting, um, which was quite dramatic. And um, we've got somebody here, he, has, he had a severed arm and it completely it was restored, even though the doctors had given up on it, his arm being restored. and was looking at an amputation. I would say and that one of the greatest parts of legacy that my great grandpa A. Allen has is souls, winning people for the kingdom of God. And although there were lots of people who were healed and it did dramatically change those families' lives when that happened, it was bringing people into the kingdom. There were millions of people who were transformed out of darkness into light and were able to sit at the throne of Jesus because of that. And that's incredible. But I think also he came from such a broken home and he completely transformed his life by the power of God because he was completely delivered of that lifestyle and moved away from it and just went on for the things of God. And he took all of that zeal in his brokenness and all of that a sense of rebellion and he used it to actually transform society. He was a, a major part in the civil rights movement starting and I think that is something that secular scholars are very interested in is his impact on the civil rights movement because he helped people who were of all races feel loved and accepted and valued and he gave them space. He consistently loved well and I think that as an Allen family member that's something that gives me great joy to know that I have a family heritage of just loving people well. That's a, a legacy in my family but I think 
seeing souls won for the kingdom is a legacy in its own because we will never know the impact that the world has had as a result of that and the people who actually started ministry as a result of being transformed in those meetings and going on and transforming the world in, in their corner of it. I hope you've been enjoying these stories, but more importantly, I hope they inspire you to step up and be what God's called you to be. I just wanna encourage you to whatever has been your obstacle, just take it to God and He'll give you wisdom and Holy Spirit will give you the power to be everything God has called you to be. Remember, God is your biggest fan and He loves you and He's made a way for you. In fact, He said, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. And let me say this, there were times in my life I kept trying, and I think we all do this, we try to live up to a standard that we think we should be. But the truth is God isn't looking for that. He's looking for availability. We've heard that from everybody from A.A. A. Allen to Catherine Kuhlman. God's just, God is just looking for someone that's available to Him. So make yourself available. Don't try and get all cleaned up before you're there. Don't worry, God will take care of that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone watching today. Lord, as they've seen and heard from A.A. Allen's great-granddaughter, Lord, that they're encouraged, they're edified, they're built up. And Lord, I pray that as this week unfolds before that they will do things that they never thought they would do, they'll step out in ways that they never thought they would step out. And they'll depend on you and Holy Spirit lead and guide as we stand up together to be the one to bring a light to this generation because of what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.